Hello, what's up YouTube photographer Ronnie Sweet and Atua. in this tutorial I'm going to be showing you how you can easily understand the concept of getting and retaining skin texture every single time you're retouching using either the mixer brush tool and also the lasso tool. And also in this tutorial you're going to be learning about how to set up and use up the mixer brush tool and also how to use the lasso tool the very right and correct way. So this is going to be focusing more on retaining those nice and rich details within your images in photoshop so without further ado let's get started and before you can proceed i request that you hit the like button on this video because when you hit the like button it also helps you to push and recommend this video to many people out there so i would request that you hit the like button on this video so right now we're going to be understanding first of all frequency passion the reason for this is because i want you to first of all understand where we are getting the textures and the step that is very crucial to retaining those nice and rich details within the images. So when you are having frequency separation, we have two layers right here. So I'm just going to create those two layers. And I'm going to name this into low. And I'm going to name this into high. So we have two layers. That is the low frequency layer and the high frequency layer. So usually if at all you have an action, it is going to stop at the point I'm going to be getting to you later on as the tutorial is proceeding. So what the action basically is doing for you, it creates these two layers and basically it turns this off and automatically selects this. So this is the most important step for retaining skin textures or details within the skin every single time you're using frequency separation. So first of all, we come to filter and we come to blur and we come to gush and blur. So this is where the action is going to stop if at all you happen to have an action that has this command of stopping whereby you have to put in the radius in your Gaussian blur. So basically this window is the one that is going to determine the textures that we're going to be retaining with or remaining with in the overall image. So as you can look at this image, we have majority of the textures on this kind of area around the nose. So like I said, usually we take the radius all the way down and we start gradually taking it up just like that. And we stop at the point when these details are just starting to disappear completely from uh, the overall image. So at around 6, that is when my details are just starting to get lost from this very image. So depending on the image that you are retouching or you're having to retouch, you have to stop at the point when the details in that image are just starting to get lost. So just stop at that point. Then... You shouldn't cram my radius because your images may be a little bit sharper, meaning you may have to use a higher radius and others may be a little bit softer and you have to use a very low radius. So you shouldn't cram my radius, but what you have to do is basically moving the radius slider up, just like that, up to a point when the details, as you're seeing in this preview, are just starting to disappear from the image. Remember, the details will lose out from this image are going to be the details we're going to be remaining with in our final retouch image so just come and simply click ok so the action is going to continue running if at all you have the action and you'll go straight into retouching and we're going to be finding you later if i told you prefer to use actions to retouch so if i told you want to understand frequency separation we come to the high frequency line and simply turn that on then we come to image and you're going to come to apply image. So when you come to apply image, so if at all you have an 8-bit image, remember if at all you have 8 right here, this is what you have to do. So make sure you select the low frequency because we want to extract the textures from the low frequency layer. Then, like I said, if at all you have an 8-bit image, the blend mode has to be subtract right here and make sure the channel is RGB. Make sure the opacity is at 100%. Preserve transparency and mask cannot check. The scale is 2 and offset 128. And make sure invert is not turned on. That is for an 8-bit image. But if I told you have a 16-bit image, you have to select the low frequency layer. And the channel is RGB. And the blend mode this time around has to be add. Opacity at 100%. Preserve transparency and mask cannot check. The scale has to be 2 and offset of 0. And make sure you turn on the invert option. And you'll have the textures on this 50 percent gray layer so just come and simply hit ok so we just want the blend mode that is going to deal away with this 50 percent gray kind of 
information within the image and that blend mode is going to be linear light so just come to the blend modes and simply click and scroll down to where you see linear light and you get back the textures so like i said frequency separation divides the image into two layers so i'm going to group these two layers by pressing ctrl command g on the keyboard and i'm just going to name that into frequency separation so after we have done that you can see that there is no difference between the original image and our frequency separation group and if at all i turn off the background layer you can see it is the same image so right now we just want to go straight into retouching remember when we are retouching usually we have different tools that enable us to retouch images so the very first tool that we are going to be learning about or understanding is the mixer brush so you have to come and set up the mixer brush tool so you just come right click under the brushes and you get the mixer brush tool but if i told you how an older version of photoshop you may find your mixer brush tool below here so this is why you have to set up the mixer brush tool so make sure the hardness is at zero percent meaning it is a soft one and right now you have to make sure that it is a clean brush and make sure you select the option which says clean the brush after each and every stroke the weight is nine percent the load of 75 the mix at 90 and the flow of 100 percent so after doing that make sure sample oils is not checked because when you click on this option and you try painting on the skin area it means that the brush is going to also be copying information from the high frequency layer and painting it in, in the low frequency layer, which we don't want so make sure that this option is not turned on so basically after doing that and after setting up the mr brush tool and if i told you mr brush tool is now set up right or well and it's showing a plus icon like this make sure you press the capsule lock on the keyboard and also if at all you want to increase or decrease on the size of the mr brush tool you can use the open and close brackets on the keyboard and that is going to help you retouch smaller or larger areas depending on your workflow or depending on the areas that you want to retouch in your images so after setting or knowing under or understanding all those come and simply select the low frequency layer and after doing that just come select the low frequency layer and hide the high frequency layer the reason for hiding the high frequency layer is because we only want to deal with the colors within this very image so how to retouch or how to use the mr brush tool and retain those details you have to make sure to retouch the way an area is shaped you can see the forehead is moving in this kind of direction like the head wrap is moving so you have to move or make your, your strokes of the mr brush tool in that kind of direction so let me just show you quickly so you simply left click and hold down and you move your strokes in that kind of a uh, direction so that you can retain the original shape of the model's face so i'm just going to do a very quick and rough job and i show you that we are going to be retaining those nice and beautiful textures within this very image so let me just do this quick and i show you the result for just only working on the forehead area so just come and turn on the high frequency layer and you can see so when i turn on and off the overall group of african separation we have still retained the textures within the image you can say before and after before after the textures are still intact within the image and you have only blended the colors using the mr brush tool then the other thing when you're using a mr brush tool always retouch at a distance because by retouching at a distance you can see the inconsistencies within the color variations within the image or within the skin area so always retouch at a distance and don't retouch when you are zoomed all the way in because you're going to spend so much time while retouching at a zoomed in kind of variation but when you're retouching at a distance you can see every inconsistency and it helps you save time so that is for people that you use the lasso tool then if at all you use the rather this is for people that use the mixer brush tools then if at all you're using the lasso tool to retouch make sure you leave the high frequency layer turned on and you simply come and get the lasso tool so make sure it is in new selection mode then also the feathering is 22 pixels because as you're making a selection onto the skin area like this if at all i'm to press q on the keyboard you can see that the feathered edges are really very smooth and they are feathered out quite well 
But if at all you press Q once again to hide that mask and you leave the feather to around zero pixels, it means that the selection that we make is going to be sharp. You can see at how sharp this is. I'm just pressing Q to show you that kind of preview. You can see how sharp that selection has been. So make sure it is as smooth as possible. So make sure you use a feather of 22 pixels to have a smooth selection. So when you're using the lasso tool to retouch, just come and you make a selection the way an area is shaped, just like that. And after doing that, just come to filter and you come to blur and come to gush and blur. So when you come to gush and blur, it is going to show you the previous radius that you applied when you are blurring out the textures from the image. And it is at this radius that you start taking up the radius slider. Remember, we use the radius of 6 pixels. So when you start take, taking this up, it's going to show us the skin texture within the image. So just come and take that up, up to when you feel like you're having a nice skin texture for the image. Just going to zoom in slightly and just come and simply hit OK. But if at all you want a finer texture or a realistic texture, what you have to do, remember we had the radius of 6, just multiply whichever radius that you had for your frequency separation. As you're separating the frequencies of the image or the layers, just multiply that radius by 3. So for my case, I had 6. So 6 by 3 is 18 and I'll just type in 18. And you can see the texture is still very natural and simply hit OK. And I'm just going to click away to deselect and you can see the before and after before after. The texture is still intact as well. So usually I would recommend that you use both the mixer brush tool and also the lasso tool method in order to have perfect results in your images. So this is it for today's story and I hope you have understood everything. And if I told you I've learned something, you don't forget to like this video. Don't forget to subscribe to this channel. If I told you I've been watching and you're not subscribed yet to this channel, Ronix from Ronix Photography. Thank you for watching and I'll see you in yet more amazing trails. And don't forget to keep practicing and also keep creating.